Fixation of a bicondylar fracture of the tibial plateau using the LCP 4.5, 5.0 proximal tibia plate, or PTP, and the application of a bone substitute, in this case, Kronos Inject. Bicondylar type C fractures of the tibial plateau are multifragmentary articular fractures, characterized by the involvement of both the medial and lateral plateaus. As a rule, on the lateral side, there is usually considerable comminution and impaction of the articular surface. On the medial side, there is usually a large bone block that has been avulsed or sheared off in one piece. The model shows a large bone block medially and considerable comminution laterally. Stages of reconstruction Preoperative planning Reduction and fixation of the medial plateau Reduction and fixation of the lateral plateau Injection of a bone substitute Chronos inject into the lateral bone defect Preoperative planning and incisions the patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the injured knee flexed approximately 60 degrees. The uninjured leg is lowered so that C-arm images can be taken in both AP and lateral planes. To fix such complex injuries, two separate incisions are preferred, one postural medially and one laterally in order not to interfere with the delicate soft tissue cover over the tibial tuberosity. The patella and the lateral and medial joint lines serve as landmarks. Reduction and fixation of the medial plateau. First, a straight postural medial incision, and second, Fixation with a one-third tubular plate, or an LC-DCP 3.5. The medial incision is directly dorsal to the pes anserinus, which is elevated or partially incised, depending on the fracture configuration. After clearing the fracture gap, a reduction is achieved by pushing the medial bone block upwards. Preliminary fixation is done by inserting a K-wire. This preliminary fixation is begun close to the joint surface. Then the K-wire is angled downwards so that it ends in the tibial shaft. A five-hole, one-third tubular plate is positioned on the postural medial crest of the tibia. Only minimal plate contouring is required, if at all. Next, a 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled, just distal to the apex of the fracture, using the appropriate drill guide. A depth gauge is used to measure. A 3.5 millimeter tap and corresponding sleeve are used to cut the threads. A cortex screw is inserted through the middle hole of the plate. This maneuver pulls the plate into its anti-glide or buttress position, thereby reducing the fracture indirectly. Next, a cortex screw is introduced through the most proximal plate hole. After placing the most proximal screw, the first screw will need to be retightened. The K wire must now be removed. 
The third cortex screw is inserted through the most distal plate hole. At this point, an intraoperative x-ray is advisable, as in this clinical example. Reconstruction of the lateral plateau. First, exposure of the tibial articular surface through a straight lateral approach. Second, reduction of the impacted joint fragment. Third, lateral buttressing with a plate and screws. Fourth, filling the defect with a bone graft substitute. Chronos inject. For the surgical approach, a skin incision is made running laterally to the patella and tibial tuberosity. It proceeds directly down to the bone without separating the tissue layers. In the clinical situation, the knee joint is opened by a horizontal arthrotomy distal to the meniscus. If the meniscus is torn, it's now advisable to place two or three resorbable sutures into the rim of the tear for later reattachment. To fully appreciate the extent of the damage to the lateral condyle, the condyle is gently opened through the anterior fracture line. The central impaction is elevated with a pusher. After reducing the lateral construct, the reduction is held in place using the large pointed reduction forceps. A 4.5 5.0 LCP proximal tibial plate is placed to support the lateral condyle by buttressing it. Alternatively, either a T-buttress plate or a tibial head buttress plate can be used. The LCP is fixed temporarily with two K-wires, as shown here. Before placing any screws, it's advisable to check the quality of the reduction with X-rays in two planes. The first screw is inserted through the plate hole, just distal to the apex of the fracture. The 4.5 3.2 universal drill guide is used in the neutral position. Both cortices are drilled through using the 3.2 millimeter drill. After measuring and tapping, the 4.5 millimeter cortex screw is inserted. The 5.0 threaded LCP drill sleeve is screwed into the most anterior of the proximal plate holes. This drill sleeve will show the direction of the most proximal locking head screw. The plate is secured to the bone proximally by using a 4.5 millimeter cortex screw. The two cortex screws are tightened sequentially to maximize the buttress effect. The anterior K wire is removed to avoid collision with the drill used for the anterior hole of the proximal end of the plate. A hole is drilled using the 4.3 millimeter drill bit. The screw length can be taken from the markings on the drill shaft. The drill sleeve is removed. The 4 Newton meter torque limiter is used to insert a 5.0 locking head screw of the appropriate length. After beginning with a power tool, the insertion is completed by hand using the large hexagonal screwdriver with integrated torque limiter. The posterior K wire is removed. The more posterior plate holes in the L plate are usually hard to reach through the anterior incision. A separate stab incision is appropriate. A second locking head screw is inserted through the middle plate hole of the proximal end of the plate in a similar manner to the first one. The proximal fixation is completed 
by using a locking head screw just proximal to the apex of the fracture. Finally, another locking head screw is inserted through the most distal plate hole. Injection of a bone substitute, Kronos inject, into the lateral bone defect. A hole is drilled in the anterior cortex using a 4.5 millimeter drill. A probe is inserted into the bone defect and used to impact the bone debris to create a single space for the introduction of the Kronos inject. The Kronos inject powder is supplied in an application cartridge. Tapping the application cartridge is necessary to make the powder fall into the base of the cartridge. The blue sealing cap is removed. The blunt injection needle is mounted on the syringe containing the liquid component. All the liquid is injected into the cartridge. The blue sealing cap is replaced and locked by its bayonet catch. The Kronos inject is mixed by moving the blue plunger back and forth from stop to stop for a full minute. The plunger is rotated at the same time. After mixing is complete, the plunger is fully pulled out and snapped off. The cartridge is placed upright for two minutes so that air bubbles can escape. The far end of the cartridge is loaded into the bayonet catch on the delivery gun. The blue sealing cap is removed and the appropriate injection cannula is mounted. When the delivery gun is held upright, the remaining air is expelled from the cartridge by gently squeezing the trigger several times. The cannula is inserted into the defect, and the defect is filled by squeezing the trigger slowly and steadily. Excessive pressure is avoided. Finally, excess Kronos inject material is removed from the bone surface. Summary. This presentation has shown how to achieve stable fixation of a complex type C fracture of the proximal tibia. The critical points for success include accurate imaging and meticulous pre-operative planning to ensure that the fracture anatomy is clearly understood. The use of two separate incisions to minimize soft tissue trauma. The fixation of the single large medial block of bone first, which helps anatomical reduction of the lateral compartment. The use of the LCP plate placed laterally in buttress mode. And the use of a bone substitute, Kronos inject filling the subchondral defect created after anatomical reduction of the surface of the lateral tibial plateau.